Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. And in this Regame Theta.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. I'm going to take a few moments, though, to first of all wish you a Happy New Year. And I truly hope that 2019 brings all of the joy and success that you yearn for. Secondly, I'd like to say thank you for all of the support throughout 2018. It has been an amazing year for both Amy and myself, Paul. So once again, without your support, without your likes, without your comments, interactivity, sharing, and well, just general being there with us, it wouldn't be possible for us to be in this position. So truly it is still really humbling and kind of weird to me to see videos sometimes having like, 10,000, 20,000 views in just a few days. I know that that's quite small change compared to some YouTubers, but it's still weird to me that, you know, a football stadium could essentially be filled up with the number of views that some videos get. So once again, thank you very much for all of your support. And I hope that 2019 will be the year that you continue your journey with us. Anyway, uh, now we're moving on for the mushy stuff and we're going to move over to the tech news because despite the fact that it is still the 2nd of January, there is a lot of tech news that somehow popped up and one of them is from the Russian website eCatalog. Now they are kind of like a online catalog where you can buy various computer components and they're pretty well known in Russia from my understanding. And a few websites picked up on the fact that they have listed various Ryzen 3000, aka Matassi, processors. There are five separate SKUs. We're going to go through them in just a moment. The highest end CPU is a Ryzen 9 3800X. Once again, I'm going to go through the processor specifications in just a moment, but they are really close to the specifications that Adored TV actually leaked around a month or so ago. However, there are a couple of things that raise my eyebrows with these. But first of all, we're going to go through the processor specifications. I'm not going to go through all of them because, well, it's kind of pointless and I'll plonk them on screen, but I will go through a couple of the highlights. We're going to start things out with the Ryzen 9 3800X. It's an AM4 part, and surprisingly, 125 watts, 4.7 gigahertz uh, up to. And it is listed as a base clock of 3.9 gigahertz, once again, 4.7 gigahertz, 7nm process. The uh, processor obviously has SMT, number of threads is 32 with 16 cores. After the 3800X, we have the Ryzen 5 uh, series of CPUs. These have eight processor cores, 16 threads. The turbo clock is either 4.8 or 4.4 gigahertz respectively. And we also have the 3700X, which is a 12 processor core CPU, 24 threads, and turbos up to five gigahertz. And the TDP for those processors ranges from just 65 watts to 105 watts, whereas the 3800X part has a TDP of 125 watts. So that obviously is 20 watts higher than say the 2700X and represents around a 19% increase uh, from the previous generation. Now we all know that there is a lot of uh, information regarding the specifications of the new processors. From my sources, I'm gonna go through Jim's sources in just a moment, but from my sources, I've heard that there is some debate between motherboard manufacturers and AMD, uh, along with internal departments of AMD, on whether we see backwards compatibility. Basically, AMD themselves want backwards compatibility between the 500 series motherboards and the 400 series motherboards, but uh, some of the technical guys at AMD do not want that. The reason behind that is, well, I've gone through all of this stuff in a previous video, so I'll try to remember to link it, but the too long didn't read is that with the size of BIOSes on motherboards, uh, they don't believe that the 400 series boards could adequately support the, uh, the new series of CPUs, particularly if you have a TDP increase and, well, yeah, it goes on and on and on. But that's one of the concerns that a lot of people have. But even so, supposedly it's still, still going to be on an AM4 platform. In terms of memory support, my sources have told me it's going to be up to 3200 megahertz. You've got uh, USB 3.2 in there, you've got PCIe 4.0, and so on. And the specifications of these chips, in terms of clock speeds, along with core counts, really closely matches Adored TV. But there is a couple of things which do raise my eyebrows. The first is that online retailers typically don't necessarily have 
accurate listings. What they do is have placeholders. So you can look at this immediately as one of two ways. The first is that they've pretty much just gone, oh, Adore TV specs are getting a lot of attention. It seems roughly what other people are saying as well, you know, give or take a couple hundred megahertz here or there. Uh, so we're just gonna put those in right now, generate traffic, hopefully people will remember us, bookmark us, place pre-orders or what have you and go from there. Or they are 100% accurate and they have sources which pretty much closely mirror Adore TVs. But there is one reason that's telling me they don't have that. Because if you were to look at the instruction set of the processors, they are essentially identical to the original Zen architecture. In fact, they look like a copy and paste to my understanding. So it doesn't look like they're actually using additional information compared to what Jim had. Instead, it looks like they're basically either had exactly the same information that Jim had without the addition of like uh, new instruction sets and stuff, but that seems unlikely to me. So I believe that they are essentially copying what Jim is saying. Now, I'm not saying Jim's wrong. I'm simply saying that I think that this particular website is just copying what he's saying. Over the Christmas period as well, I was speaking to a source, the same source who gave me some of the other information, and he claims that AMD for the most part are trying to stick with the same TDPs as the previous generation, but they might need to make exceptions because they are obviously looking to ramp up clock speeds, which from what I've been told, and this is not really a rumor pertaining to the specifications, it's more a general feeling of a lot of AIBs along with the customers. One of the issues obviously that they're having is that while well, gaming, it's still better generally speaking, to go with Intel. There are some exceptions, particularly if you're looking at from the value perspective, like we can argue all day long of like the 2700X is a better value processor than the 9900K. In fact, I wouldn't really say it's an argument. It's, well, like me saying to you that if you stay underwater for long enough without oxygen, you're gonna drown. But yeah, the long and short of it is that even 8700K or what have you generally does better than AMD simply because of the clock speed. So obviously for them to say, well, you know what, on some parts, we're just gonna say, screw it. We're gonna increase the TDP of our processors. And TDP is not always, it's not always 100% accurate. I mean, manufacturers go over the TDP all of the time, cough, Intel, cough. So TDP is sometimes just a guideline and a lot of the time it's not 100% accurate. Regardless, my thoughts here are, no matter what happens at CES, no matter what happens in terms of the specification of the processor, I personally believe that this retailer is most likely just copying and pasting what seems good, what seems to be ga gra gathering, if I can speak, what seems to be gathering traction on the internet, because obviously that means that they're gonna be ranked higher because people are backlinking to their website. So it's just a really good way for them to do it. And if you think, well, that doesn't sound very reputable, <laughs> don't forget that even Amazon, are very guilty of doing this. In fact, Amazon has had mud flung in its face multiple times. I believe it was like, what was it, the German or Ita Italian? I think it was the Italian uh, version of Amazon. They listed like Bloodborne 2, <laughs> and it caused everyone to go nuts because, well, Bloodborne 2 is, well, just a really anticipated game because Bloodborne was amazing. And uh, I, if you've got a PlayStation and you can deal with like, Rage, then I would suggest picking it up. Or you can stream it through PlayStation Now. I don't know how good PlayStation Now works, by the way, I've never tested it. But still, it's it's worth pick checking out the game. Uh, but that's beside the point. And obviously they, they listed that Bloodborne 2 was coming out and it didn't really happen. So retailers all of the time just list stuff because it sounds good or they heard it through, you know, a source and it didn't pan out or what have you. So that's my personal opinions on this. I do believe though at CES, we are gonna hear, uh, see some announcements concerning the next generation processors. The website WCCF Tech uh, claims that we're gonna see launches of processors, which doesn't make sense to me. Generally when there's a launch, you typically hear some whispers from AIBs. And by a whisper, I don't mean that they're leaking you information. I mean that you're signing an NDA and they're like, yeah, well, there's gonna be a launch coming up at some point in the next several days. Here's a brief of like what products we're gonna be launching. And from my understanding, from talking to a couple of AIBs along with what I'm hearing from other tech uh, sources, they've not actually been given those type of uh, product launch briefs yet. 
So it's possible that something might just happen out of the blue, but it would be quite short notice. So I don't think we're going to see a CES 2019 launch, which is once again what the website WCCF Tech has uh, told us. But we are hearing a lot of information concerning Vega. My personal opinion, and it is a personal opinion, is that we're probably going to see some announcements, some probable tentative specifications of these processors, of these graphics cards at CES. And then at some point over the next couple of months, we'll start seeing products launched. But who knows, I might be wrong. I think one thing is abundantly clear though, no matter exactly the processor specs when AMD launched them, it's going to put reviewers in a really interesting position. It's going to be almost like 2015 or 2014, but with reversed roles. Back then, you had almost a blanket answer of Intel when people asked, well, what processor uh, company should I go with? And it really just came down to then, well, I will go and suggest you pick up like a 4770K or a 6700K or a 3770K. And there were some processors uh, in uh, AMD's lineup which did have fans like the 8350, particularly if it was overclocked fairly well. It was impressive for some uh, usage tasks and it wasn't terrible at gaming. It's just that Generally speaking, Intel did better. But now, with Matassi, it could be a completely different position for 6 to 12 months, depending how fast Intel get their answer out of the door. It could just mean that like, it's going to be kind of boring uh, in terms of the answer. What is probably going to be the instead, the question is like, which AMD processor do you go with? Do you go with like, say the 3600X or do you go with the, the 3700X or the 3800X or what have you? And that is going to be the question. But, you know, even if you have a 9900K right now, to be honest, if you're only gaming, most likely there's not exactly going to be a significant uptick in terms of performance, but it's going to be a really interesting year, in my opinion, for games. Now we're going to finish the video off with memory news, specifically on the next generation of consoles. So currently the PlayStation 4 and PS4 Pro have 8GB of GDDR5 memory. Uh, the Xbox One X has 12GB of memory. But a developer who works at Hellpoint believes that the memory figures for the PlayStation 5 and the next generation Xbox Scarlet will not increase. We will still see 8 to 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now personally I don't believe that this is going to be the case. And the reason behind that is because from what we're hearing about the next generation specs of these systems, it doesn't seem like there's going to be enough RAM there, especially with 8 gigabytes of memory for, let's say, the PlayStation 5. Uh, the PlayStation 5, from what we understand, is going to be using a Zen 2-based processor. I say it in such a tone because some people say Zen Plus, but given the time frame of the console being released, it's rumoured to be 2020. I don't see them using a Zen Plus processor. I believe it's going to be Zen 2, possibly like 4 or 8 cores and blah, 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 blah. And of course, a Navi-based GPU, because allegedly, anyway, according to sources who speak to, have spoken, excuse me, to Forbes and a couple other places, uh, it was uh, Sony who partially funded the development of Navi. So the performance of these consoles, it doesn't make sense for them to stick in just eight gigabytes of RAM. So I think even if you were to take the Xbox One X as an example, which is a current generation system, it's the most powerful system now, sure, but it has 12 gigabytes of RAM. There is a small caveat here as well. It's possible that Sony and Microsoft could be like, well, you know what? We're no longer going to have additional features. We're no longer going to have like video capture on our system. We're no longer going to have such a robust dashboard. Because don't forget, the memory uh, usage of these consoles is not like, oh, well, 8 gigabytes is available for developers or 12 gigabytes is available to developers. No, a significant portion has been reserved for OS functionality. So it's like you've got around five, five and a half gigabytes depending on the system. And uh, when it was released, they actually freed up a little bit of additional system memory from what I remember. So, and we're talking about the eight gigabyte models here. So they, they are basically, let's just round it up and say three gigabytes of RAM. Three gigabytes of that is not even accessible or addressable by developers, which is a significant portion. If the next generation of systems are running at like say 4K, RAM usage goes up significantly, and that's not including other stuff. As worlds get larger, 
as you have higher quality textures, as you have larger draw distances, as you have better quality lighting and more characters on screen and just you know, stuff in the world, memory gets used up real fast. In fact, there's a really cool slide that was released, I believe, I believe it was from uh, the Killzone, yeah, Killzone Shadowfall, I believe it was that. It was a long time since I've seen the slide, but it was basically when the game was still in beta, and uh, a slide was released publicly, which showed, I, I think it, the title was something like what to do with eight gigabytes of memory. You can actually see that even really early in the game's development, the developers really quickly started to gobble up all of that RAM. Uh, I think it was like five and a half gigabytes or whatever they used. So, uh, you know, RAM is one of those things where you can always use it and you can't really equate as well, which some people are doing like PC memory versus console RAM because Let's say you have a GTX 1070 or an RX 480 or what have you, they've got eight gigabytes of memory. And then you might have, let's say 16 gigabytes of memory on your system. It doesn't quite work like that because obviously uh, the memory is not shared with a console, at least now the PlayStation 3 is a notable exception, but with the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, you have a unified memory architecture, which means the GPU and CPU can essentially address the same pool of memory. That makes it really the better architecture for consoles, because what you have there is the ability for developers to be like, well, in this particular level or this particular scene, we don't really need a whole bunch of AI. We don't really need a whole bunch of, you know, this stuff. Instead, we are really going to load it up with texture data because it's going to be like a walking scene and it's there to build story. But the next scene, instead, they need to kind of reduce that and they need to put more other, you know, it depends basically on the scene and it depends upon the game. Whereas obviously if you have set containers, uh, in other words, set amounts of memory, then you can't really do that. You've got to be like, well, I've got three gigabytes of this memory and I've got five gigabytes of that memory remaining. What do I do? Another reason that I'm a bit uh, uncertain that this is going to be the case is because memory prices have started to diminish. If it was a case of like the inflated memory of, let's say, 2017 or early 2018, I might be more uh, likely to say that I believe 12 gigabytes of RAM is what we're going to be seeing. But memory prices over the past year uh, are already starting to drop. And from what we are understanding from uh, industry, 2019, things are going to change and they're going to continue to ramp up production memory. And with any luck at all, the prices will start to come down even further for us as customers, which means that it not only affects uh, the prices of GDDR5, GDDR6 memory and DDR4 memory, but it's also starting to drop the costs of uh, SSDs as well. There are some other factors as well with the prices of SSDs dropping, primarily in NAND technology and uh, new uh, controllers for SSDs, which is helping to drop the pricing, which is somewhat out of the realms of the scope of this video. But still, uh, the fact is I believe that memory prices will probably diminish enough. And given the specifications of these consoles, I think 12 gigabytes is the minimum that Sony and Microsoft are going to target. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.